In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually use your Pringles can Enigma machine. We are going to try to crack this message here. Um, a little bit of a glare, but it's L-R-B-T-A. So I want you to kind of follow along and do this with me um, so you can make sure that you're doing it correctly. Um, it can be a little confusing at first, and you'll also find quite a bit of different ways to do this online. So I would suggest you stick with my video, and if you have questions about it, come and see me. Um, I'll talk more at the end about how there's differences on what you'll find online. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're, we're going to double check to make sure we have the right parts on here in the right order and that we set things up to be able to do our first word. So for starters, we've got our reflector B. We've got rotor number one. We've got rotor three and rotor five. And then we've got our input output. The input output is always going to be on the right. Your rotors can be in any order, any of the one through fives. Um, you have to be in the order that you know, you're know you told to for your assignment. Um, and then the reflector is always first. It's either gonna be reflector B or reflector C. Obviously, one change to this is gonna completely change the key um, each time. So you would obviously not get the right answer. So we're gonna start off, you'll see there's these gray lines. And for this first demo here, we're actually gonna line them all up start. Usually on a question, if you look at the assignment, you're going to see I tell you that at the beginning. I say what the starting positions should be, and I tell you which rotors and reflector to use. Um, this would be, a, uh, for the three rotors, it would be Q, V, and Z, which is the, um, I guess you'd say the normal starting. You see they're all gray. Sometimes I can say A, A, A. Um, so how this works is it's kind of moves like a clock. You know, you have your second hand counting around. When it makes its way all around, it's going to move the minute hand by one. Um, the second hand's gonna keep going around. The minute hand will eventually get around all the way, which will then move the hour hand. So it's gonna be similar to that. So this first rotor here is not gonna move very often. The exception to that is whenever it starts it's gray, they're all gonna move at the very beginning. So I've got my initial setting of QVZ. Before I start my first letter, I'm actually going to rotate each of them down one. Again, that only is going to happen when you have it end up being gray on the line here. Um, and that's one of the things you find on different videos is they don't start by moving it. But I found enough consistency with that in some uh, other videos and websites I found that that's the method we're going to go with. Okay, so I move them all down once. Now moving forward, I'm only going to rotate this one after each letter. And I won't have to rotate this one again until this comes all the way back around. Um, so I won't have to move this one again, unless you had a really long message. But with pretty much anything we're going to do in class, you won't have to move this one once. All right, so we're going to start with our first letter, uh, which is the letter L. It's kind of hard to see with the glare there. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to find L on my input output over here. And I'm going to trace, follow this line all the way around. You'll see the color coding is actually making our lives easier. If you were just looking at black lines, it would make things a little tricky. It's going to go through this D here. It's off just a little. Uh, now I'm on a red line, down to O, cutting across to Z. It's reflecting around to G, over to K. Now I'm on a green line, up to Y, up to H. So my first letter is H. Now the genius about the Enigma machine is every time there's a new letter, the key changes. Because I'm going to rotate one more time. And you want to be careful when you're rotating to only rotate one rotor. Um, if you tape these very tightly, that will be the easiest way to make that happen. If they're loose, they might slide around. Mine are pretty tight, and they are not going to just slide around on their own. <clears throat> All right. So my key just changed. So now if I were to put an L again, I'm not going to get H. I could get H, but I wouldn't necessarily get H. So um, my second letter is an R. So I'm going to find my R on my input output. Got my R. Again, I'm going to follow the line around. To M, follow this red line to P, following the blue line to N, using the reflector, it's going to send it back to M, and 
and then to H, I, and E. All right, so my second letter is E. You will keep following the same method. Each time you finish a letter, you're going to turn the rotor one time towards you. Um, and if I were to keep doing this, I would end up with the word hello. So I definitely want you to test that out to make sure you get hello. If you don't, something is not right. Um, a couple extra things I'll say about the thing of this. Uh, it's very confusing to explain. That's why I'm not completely explaining it. Um, I will say I, I feel like I read just enough to understand the basics of it. Um, I will link in our assignment just for people who are curious. There is a lot to how that works on a real and exam machine. Um, so I just want to make sure you understand the um, the whys and why you have to turn at different times. But it definitely has something to do with a catch, similar how on a combination lock, once you get your first number, and you the other way, those teeth inside the combination lock are grabbing each other to spin back the other direction. So it's kind of like that a little bit, um, or a lot comparison would be better. All right, so there you have it. Um, I will say, I would say stay away from other online tutorials about doing this. I, I saw some that do things differently. For example, if I were to reset it, um, I saw some that say, do your first letter and then turn this. I saw some that said to turn it away from you. Um, so I'm trying to keep us consistent on turn it first, always turn the rotors towards you. Um, you'll see a lot of different things online. And I, I, I'm not 100% this is how it was done in World War II, but with the research I did, this is what I came up with was the most consistent thing I saw. So definitely stop in my room sometime if you have any questions about any of this, if you're having trouble with it. Bring your can with you so we can make sure everything's right with that if you have problems. And um, I will be available. Good luck.